What is up, Biker Bros? This is Nathan from the Gen Z Biker Blog, and I'm here today with the one and only Tim Calhoun from Quinn Designs, right? Correct. And we're here today with this awesome helmet. I've never heard of it until now. Tim gave me the spiel on this helmet, and I absolutely fell in love with the design, at least. But on top of that, they've got some really great technology that is coming into this helmet. And I wanted to share that with you guys today. So Tim, why don't you take it away and tell us a little bit about this helmet. Sure. So, quintessential designs, what we try to do is create both a well-constructed helmet in the case of an accident to keep you alive, keep you safe. We focus a lot on weight and balance. Uh, we have the first FIM helmet in the country, FIM, DOT, EC approved. This helmet comes in about 2.8 pounds, so extremely light, but more importantly, extremely balanced. Women love it, doesn't wear the neck out on long rides. Men love it, good balance in the helmet. Uh, we do a few things differently. We did a great piece on the inside where we actually run dual density foam. A little bit firmer on the outside, but we actually use memory foam on the inside of that. What that does for you as a rider is quiet down the interior, seal a little bit better around your face. If you're going to have integrated Bluetooth in a helmet, it'd be good to hear it. So we really tried to focus on giving you a good listening experience. We also run a digitally processed mic so they can hear you if you're talking on your phone. Quite frankly, my Bluetooth on this is better than the Bluetooth in my car. Beyond that, like I said, we integrate Bluetooth into every helmet we build. More importantly, we actually have a chipset, additional chipset in the helmet, so we run two Bluetooths. The first one will allow you to connect to your phone, talk on your phone, hear GPS instructions, listen to music. The second Bluetooth in this helmet will actually connect to our app on your telephone. What that does is actually tell it whether the helmet is moving or not moving, because our helmet will detect a crash and actually reach out with the GPS location of where the crash happened and contact the contacts that you put into our app. So essentially, if you're standing here and drop the helmet, it's not gonna send a false signal and say, hey, they crashed. If you're moving, we know how fast you're moving. Our chipset and sensors in the helmet know how hard you hit, how many times you hit, where you hit on the helmet. From that, we can extrapolate how severe that accident was. Your helmet will actually be able to go into about a 10 second countdown on the app, give you a chance to shut it down if you're not incapacitated. If not, it'll automatically do a push notification a text and an email out to your contacts. When they open that up, it'll actually open up with your GPS location. If you tap the bottom of the app, it'll let them call you directly. And if you tap the center of where the mark is, it'll open up into a mapping program showing them how to get to where you are. Secondarily, we offer an SOS feature on our helmet as well. If you tap this front button three times on the helmet, it'll go into an SOS countdown Maybe your bike broke down, maybe you're trying to limp at home, or maybe you fell down and got hurt but didn't get incapacitated. Once that goes off, it'll do the same thing, open up, but that is actually live tracking. So as you move, it'll continue to track your location so they can come to you or they can follow you trying to get home. That's the key parts of our helmet. So, just to clarify everything that he just said, guys, this is a Bluetooth helmet. You do have capability to connect your phone. But on top of that, it's carbon fiber and it's lined with Kevlar. So a lot of the competitors out there are pitching, yes, carbon fiber helmet, super light. How light is this? 2.8 pounds. 2.8 pounds. To put it into perspective, a lot of you guys that have been tuning into my channel for the last couple of years now, you know that I run a Shoei RF 1200. Uh, that is a fairly light helmet, but that comes in at about 3.6 to 3.7 pounds, I believe. Almost a pound heavier. Just, yeah. just about, and I mean, you're looking at, uh, like I said, just about a pound difference in this helmet. Um, some of the other key features that stood out to me, aside from the absolutely gorgeous carbon fiber, um, the ratchet system, instead of the traditional D-ring, you've got a ratchet system here. A lot easier to use. Um, you've got your front vent, top vents, all of them are adjustable. Uh, rear exit venting. Um, in terms of your, your front visor, you've got multiple different positions that it stops at for that airflow. I don't know about you guys, but when I'm riding, I don't necessarily always either have it fully closed or, or fully open or for fully closed. I usually like to pick that middle ground or have it just cracked, kind of like your windows in your car. Always like to have it a little bit open when I'm not motovlogging at least. That said, when it comes to motovlogging, the part that stood out to me is that he said it's lined with Kevlar. So do you mind just telling them, for those of them that are out there looking to utilize Bluetooth or potentially motovlog, 
why that Kevlar lining is important. Yeah, if you're running a purely carbon fiber only helmet, it actually can pick up sound and amplify sound inside the helmet. It's pretty loud as far as the material. It doesn't really insulate from sound inside the helmet. By adding the Kevlar layer in between, it actually deadens the sound going through the carbon fiber. More importantly, it actually disperses energy better in case of an impact over a broader area. It doesn't just shatter. So the two things we were trying to do is create a uh, more energy management in the case of a crash. Secondarily, make it quiet inside. Again, if you want an integrated Bluetooth in a helmet, you're trying to listen to something, you want that helmet to be as quiet inside as you can possibly make it. Okay. Now, as far as plans for uh, your helmets go, what is what are some of the up and coming things that you guys are going to be adding to these helmets? I know you mentioned there were a few things that you're going to be adding sure. soon. So we just finalized our project of getting pin locks done for the helmets. Going forward, all of our helmets will actually include a 120 pin lock, which is the highest rated anti-fog uh, insert for a helmet. And of course, you can add tinted or high-vis uh, uh, pin locks as well. Secondarily, we're just starting our project on transition lenses. So that is a self-tinting lens for those of you who don't know what it is. Um, transitions take a little bit longer, but they're doing the bonding process right now. Once that's finalized, we'll make those available as well. And the big difference from us from a lot of the competitors are we're not going through a large distributor. We're self-distributing to dealers and direct to the public. What that means for you is instead of this being a $900 helmet, it's a lot more affordable. Top line helmet, the 659. Transition will not be a $200 transition. We're trying to shoot for that 100 to 125 mark on a transition. Again, we're cutting out that middle process to try and save consumers dollars and offer them a great product for a great price. Of course. So, 659 you said for this helmet? Yeah. Now, comparing this to your more entry-level helmets, what are the differences? Like, what, what is the bonus that you get to this helmet as opposed to the others? So, as opposed to like our polycarbonate shell, polycarbonate comes in at about 3.3 pounds, so it actually is a very respectable weight for that helmet. Polycarbonate also offers a drop-down inside shield. Because we went for FIM World Racing approval on this, you can't have an inside shield in the helmet. So we didn't include one on this. So okay. a little bit more of a street-oriented helmet on the polycarbonate. Yeah. For as your far everyday as, rider. Of course. So. As far as the guts of it, uh, same technology, same chipset, IntelliQuin chipset inside, same quality Bluetooth inside, uh, same durability, about eight hours listening time, about 60 of your GPS and phone signal, just okay. talking on the phone. So really, really good um, the battery life as far as your Bluetooth awesome. usage in the helmet. Speaker sets, we went through an unbelievable amount of speakers trying to find the best speaker we could. That is in every helmet from the three quarter all the way up to the top of the line. So we didn't want to compromise on the technology, the chipset, the safety factor. Really what you're paying for a difference in is the type of shell. Um, we actually use the same EPS and everything. And what you're paying for is obviously high end carbon fiber, a little more uh, engineering on that helmet. Okay. So now moving forward from this conversation, guys, you know that I never really pitch anything on my channel unless it sounds like it's something that I truly believe and I test it out. Um, I did put this helmet on. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put it on for you right now just to show you kind of the fit and finish. I do have a little bit more of a skinnier oval type head. This is, what size is this again? I think that's an uh, XL. Yeah. So this is an XL. Um, I will go Side ahead here. and... I don't have the size. So this was an XL. Um, in their line, I would probably go with a large um, based on the size and shape of my head. I believe in showies, I'm looking at more so of a medium. Um, so it does seem like they run a little bit bigger in terms of sizing, but overall you can most definitely notice the difference in weight on a helmet like this compared to my helmet at home. Very, very noticeable. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention to you guys that really stands out to me, I'm really big on safety and obviously they're hugely hugely into the idea of the safety of these helmets with the technology that they put into place. But it's not just that. The amount of experience and prestige in these guys' backgrounds is absolutely amazing. Uh, Tim, do you mind just telling me kind of like the background of the company and your background a little bit? So the company is founded by Ani. Um, Ani actually... Uh 
founded Cranium uh, quite a few years ago, the bicycle helmet company. Actually invented a uh, recycled paper uh, liner for the helmets that actually stopped energy about three times better than an EPS liner. Founded that, sold that, won a lot of international awards on that. Um, he was hired by Ferrari at 23. Uh, actually graduated from Cambridge from the Dyson School of Design. Well, at Ferrari, they sent him to the London School of Design. He actually worked on the design engineering team on everything from F1 projects on down. So a very good understanding of weight savings, structural integrity, how different composites work. That's his core background. For myself, I've uh, been in the industry professionally for about 35 years now. Uh, started behind a counter, worked for some of the biggest distributors in the industry, owned my own company as well, and then just left one of the larger helmet distributors in the country. So I've worked with the top end products like Arise, Shoei, HAC. I've been on the safety side for most of my career in the aftermarket with apparel and helmets. So very strong background in actually trying to build things to keep people safe and keep people alive and let them enjoy their riding experience a lot better. Of course. So as soon as I began discussions with these guys, I kind of saw a helmet company that reached not only beyond just building a great safe helmet, but what's next in the case of an accident. It's the only helmet company I saw out there really paying attention to that golden hour of after an accident and trying to improve our ability to get somebody to them as quickly as possible to help them. And that's the exciting part is I think we're gonna save lives. I think we're gonna make the riding experience better with a nice, quiet, lightweight helmet. And um, I'm excited where we're gonna go as a brand. As far as where we're going, um, we're expanding into a modular very quickly. That'll be in market in a couple months. Okay. Uh, working on a lightweight carbon fiber three quarter that should be a lot of fun as well. Probably mid two pounds or less. And then uh, looking down the road a bit towards a dirt helmet that'll actually have a different algorithm for the dirt because you crash differently. But again, offering the same kind of safety if you're out in the woods riding by yourself or alone, you've got an angel on your shoulder, and that's what we're trying to create. That's awesome. Well, thank you for tuning in today, Biker Bros. I hope you enjoyed this video uh, with Tim from Quinn Design. Make sure to check out their social channels, their website, all of that jazz. I'll link it above and below in the, uh, the bio of the video. Uh, these are amazing helmets. I definitely want to start working with this company and kind of test out the, the helmet while I'm actually on the bike. Uh, stay tuned, ride safe out there, Biker Bros. And thanks again, thanks, Tim. Appreciate, appreciate it. Take care.